Hey friends, Abby Johnson here. Uh, just a quick few minutes. Uh, first, I want to give you an update about something that I'm excited about. Um, I am restarting my podcast called Mistakes Out Loud. Um, now I have all this time on my hands. So uh, I've, I've been wanting to do that for a long time and we're going to get that restarted. We're going to be doing that weekly. Um, so look for that. It's on iTunes. It's I think it's on Google Play, but I know it's on iTunes. Um, so we'll be getting that up and going soon. I'm hoping to tape um, or record the tape. Who says that anymore? I'm um, hoping to record the first episode tonight or tomorrow. Did want to give you a quick update on some of the legal stuff that's been going on with the executive order. Uh, executive orders, you know, as you know, most states uh, in the states where the governors have filed executive orders to stop non-essential surgeries, which would be abortion, um, the abortion industry and other abortion groups have filed lawsuits um, to try to uh, enjoin or basically get a restraining order, uh, restrain that order so that they can continue to perform abortions. Um, they were successful in Texas getting a TRO. We knew that was going to happen. Um, Judge Yackel, who's the one that um, he ruled on that, he is in the abortion industry's pocket. So he always, always, always rules in favor um, of the abortion industry. Um, it will now be taken up an appeal at the um, Fifth Circuit court. They'll have a three-judge panel. Uh, we expect that to rule in our favor. Um, they're a pretty fair group of judges and uh, pretty level-headed, so we expect that to rule in our favor. Um, so we'll just sort of see how this how this goes. Um, we expect to get a ruling back within the next couple of days um, from the, the Fifth Circuit court. So um, we're waiting to see what's going to happen in Mississippi and Ohio and Louisiana and Kansas and these other states um, that have done the same thing. Uh, so far, we're just sort of in a holding pattern and waiting. Of course, the abortion industry doesn't want to stop doing abortions. Um, of course, they need to make money. It's not about helping women. It's not about any of that. This is about money for them. Losing a month's worth of abortion revenue for them would be devastating to their business model and their business practice. Um, so, uh, that's sort of what's going on there. I, you know, I do, I, I feel like, you know, we just, we got to talk about this guys. I, we are living in crazy, crazy times right now. We've got a pastor in Florida. Now, meanwhile, Florida, uh, there are five states in the United States that make up more than half of the abortions nationwide. Those states are California, New York, Illinois, Texas, and Florida. So Florida has one of the highest abortion rates in the country. Florida still performing abortions every day of the week during this pandemic, okay? There's a pastor in Florida that opened up his church, held a church service for 500 people. Now, look, I'm not commenting on my opinion of that. Whatever. Okay, I'm not, I'm not even saying that. What I am saying is that he has been arrested now for two misdemeanor charges for opening up a church and allowing people to come into the church on their free will, nobody forced them to go to the church, okay? Nobody said, man, you better go to the church today or else you're going to get it. We're going to cap your butt, right? Nobody, nobody did that, okay? People on their own free will walked into the church, participated in the church service, okay? This man simply opened the doors to the church. He gets arrested on two counts. Meanwhile, down the road, abortion clinics all around this church killing babies. The state says nothing. Perfectly fine. 
North Carolina group of people, pastors, go out to the abortion facility. They're going to pray. They get arrested. They're praying out in front of a facility that is killing babies. They are keeping their distance. They are doing nothing wrong. They're not huddled up. A group of 20,000 of them all huddled up, breathing in each other's faces, licking each other, okay? They're, they're apart, practicing social distancing outside, for goodness sake, which is what everybody's told us to go outside. Outside, praying in front of an abortion facility where babies are being killed, these pastors get arrested. That, that's, that's how we're living right now, guys. That's how we're living right now. People who need cancer treatment. People who need heart surgery. Cannot get it. Because it's not deemed essential. Now, I mean, I don't know. I think heart surgery is pretty essential. But it's not deemed essential. A woman can walk in and kill her baby. That's essential. I mean, I don't know how long we let this go on, if I'm perfectly honest with you. I mean, I understand the risk. I, I, you're not hearing me say, like, I don't care about old people or I don't. That's not what I'm saying, okay? But I don't know how long we let this go on. I don't know how long we say we're willing to abide by these rules while babies are being killed. We're being stifled. Our freedoms are being stifled, yet babies are being killed. Our freedoms are being, our freedom to worship in the house of the Lord is being stifled, yet a woman can walk into an abortion clinic and exercise her freedom to kill. I, I, I'm not telling you don't practice social distance. I'm not telling you any of that, okay? I'm just putting this out there for all of you so that we can all really think about what is happening in our society right now and what a backwards worldview we are living in right now. Pastors getting arrested for praying. Women killing their babies, it's acceptable. Clinics defying orders, executive orders from the governor, no problem. I mean, no, nobody else has, I mean, I'm the only person that sees a problem with, surely I'm not the only person that says we have a problem here I mean, I just, I just read where a pregnancy center said, well, we're not going to be performing ultrasounds anymore because, you know, the, the mandate by the governor. Okay. Well, the abortion clinic down the street, they're still doing abortions. I mean, I, I don't know, y'all. I'm just... I'm, I am all about playing by the rules when lives aren't being taken. But when lives are being taken, I mean, I'm sort of wondering when do we rise up and say enough with the rules? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm posing this question to everybody. I don't go out and lick your neighbor or anything. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to get us thinking about what's happening here 
in this country. I know it's serious. I know it. I get it. Okay? But there's something weird going on here. There's something bigger at play. And I'm not, I, and you know, I'm not trying to say like, well, it's just like the flu. Okay, I understand this isn't like the flu, but but hear me out here. I got swine flu many years ago when the, the swine flu was really bad. It was Christmas Day. Okay, I was like, oh my gosh, like I think I'm gonna die. I'd never felt so sick. Okay, and I was at my in-laws' house, and my my in-laws were like, yo. We're taking you to the emergency room. Something is not right here, okay? Everybody thought I was dying. Okay, so they took me to the emergency room. The emergency, you know, they like stuck that thing out my nose. It was incredibly unpleasant. And they came back and they said, oh, well, you have the swine flu. And I was like, oh my gosh, how embarrassing, okay? Just strictly because of the name. It was really, really embarrassing. Okay, so I got the swine flu. Um, I survived it. I was fine. I have asthma, so... You know, they're a little concerned, but I have a rescue inhaler, so, and I have a nebulizer, and everything was fine. Okay, so, that was sort of what happened. All right. There were, um, about 18,000 deaths, uh, from, from what I've read, um, from the swine flu, uh, during a very short period of time. In the United States, and it affected uh, old and young uh, equally. This seems to be primarily affecting the elderly. It doesn't affect children as much as it affects the elderly and the immunocompromised. Swine flu affected everybody. Uh, you were everybody was at risk. Okay, all right. So um, anyway, and uh, it was bad. I mean, it was a really serious uh, problem. Okay, and. Uh, we didn't shut down the schools. We uh, didn't close down businesses for weeks. Um, we didn't have to do all these things that we're doing right now. Um, surgeries weren't canceled. Um, I think people took extra precaution, right? Church services weren't canceled. Um, and that's why I'm telling you, I'm not like a conspiracy theorist or anything. I'm just telling you, I feel like there's something bigger at play here. And I'm not entirely sure what it is. And I'm not trying to make light of what's happened with with those who have con who have gotten the coronavirus, I'm not trying to make light that all. I know it's very serious. I'm just saying there's something fishy going on here. It doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, our hospitals were not run out of PPE, and they were certainly seeing more clients. They were seeing more patients. But now they're running out of PPE. Why? What the heck is going on? I mean, it makes me want to cuss. I don't, I don't, what is going on? I don't get it. And I feel like there's probably people much smarter than me, none of us who watch this YouTube, but people much, much smarter than all of us who, who get it and understand it. But just for like a regular old person like us, I, um, I'm not understanding it, and I'm not understanding this this uh, this religious persecution that's taking place right now. I mean, besides the fact that we're in a spiritual battle, like I understand that we're in a spiritual battle, but there, I feel like there's something more here that we don't know about. So that's sort of where I am right now. That's sort of what I'm thinking. And uh, we'll, we'll continue to sort of flesh this out. But uh, you don't kill me in the comment section. I'm not saying to go cough on your friend or that this isn't a big deal or Abby Johnson hates old people. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's not a big deal. I'm, I'm just... <sighs> you cannot tell me I'm the only person that's thought this. Okay.
I mean, let's be honest. So, uh, there's my random thoughts for a Monday. And I think it's Monday. All the days run together when you are in a house with 15 people. You don't know what day it is. I only know what time it is by looking outside and telling if it's dark or light. Plus, Fulton's teething. So, I mean, I'm up a lot at night and I'm like, I think it's the middle of the night or maybe it's 7 a.m. So I look outside and then I can tell. I don't know anymore. <sighs> I'm not gonna watch the movie JFK, I can tell you that because that movie freaked me the flip out. And I think I'm going a little nutty as of right now, just being in this house all the time with all these people. So I don't need any conspiracy movies getting in my head right now. The first time I watched JFK, I was up all night. I could not sleep. I was like, what else is the government not telling? I mean, I was freaking out. So I'm not going to be watching that. But anyway, there's my crazy rambling thoughts for the evening. Let's see what time it is. 9.15 p.m. So, um, everybody, enjoy your evening. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Hopefully, I'm not wearing the same thing. That's the other thing. I have to remind myself to change clothes because we don't do anything around here. So, um, I will bring you another outfit as well. And it will also be another t-shirt and yoga pants or something. So, all right, everybody, have a good night.